What is up guys? It is Brendan from Modern to Me and today we are learning methods and I am so excited to teach you about methods. I've been waiting to teach you guys about methods for so long because uh, what you if you don't know what a method is this is a method right here this public static void main this is the main method and i like i keep trying to really like, refer to the main method but i get scared when i say method because i know i haven't taught what methods are yet and it just like freaks me out so i'm super excited to teach you guys about methods today so uh basically what a method is uh, beyond just saying that it's this computer programs especially video games are very long. If you've ever played a video game, I guarantee it's thousands and thousands of lines of code, and you can't just have thousands of lines of code be crammed into one method. If you just had thousands of lines of code under this void main, it would be awful and wouldn't make any sense. So what you do is that you have more than one method, and basically a method accomplishes a specific task. So we're going to make a method right now, and we're just going to make a method that outputs something to the screen. So the first word that you see uh, for the main method is public, and that's uh, called an accessor modifier. And uh, we're not going to get into that now. I have a tutorial on that later, but we're just going to make our met method private instead of public because that's just basically limiting uh, what can access it. And there's no sense in having it be public if we don't need it to be public. So it's just best practice to have it be private if it has to, if it doesn't have to be public. So we have it as private. And now the next word you see is static. Um, that's also in a later tutorial. It sucks. I still have to keep saying, oh, I'll teach you later. But uh, basically, we have to have this method be static because if we want to call this method from um, main, main is a static method. It can also only call static methods. So if this wasn't static and if we just didn't have this word be just completely ignored uh, putting in the word static, then our method wouldn't uh, be allowed to be run in main. So we're going to have it be static. Just a little bit on static. Static basically means that it's not going to change. Uh, it's kind of what static means. Static versus like dynamic. Dynamic is different and ever changing, whereas static is always the same. And so we're going to have this method be static. It's not going to change. And then the next word you see is void. This is going to be void also. Void, the, like, the literal definition is complete emptiness. Uh, nothingness uh, and, that, and that's what it means in programming also it means that it's not going to return anything that means that this function or not function uh, method isn't going to return anything to where it was called that is also actually going to be i think that might be the next tutorial or coming up soon but don't worry about it for now just have it be void like main is and then you need the name for your method we can't name it main because we already have a main function we'll just name it my underscore method you see uh, for the main, you see these string args. Uh, what these are is, uh, in terms of the main method, these are the uh, command line arguments that you can pass in if you compile your uh, program from the command prompts like we kind of did in the uh, uh, first tutorial. But what these are, these are called parameters when you have something inside these parentheses. What we uh, pass into the system.out.println function we are passing in our, when we pass in a variable, we're passing that in as a parameter. Uh, I'll show you about that in a sec, but we don't need any parameters for this method, so we'll just leave that blank. And now we need an opening uh, curly bracket to start our method, and then it automatically added this closing curly bracket for us to close our method. So our code is gonna go in here. All we're gonna have this method do is just output something. So we'll go system.out.println, and what you can see here, you see it has all these different uh, print LN functions with different per kinds of parameters right here. And uh, basically you can pass in the, uh, your variable as a parameter and that's what gets outputted. And so that's all a parameter is, is it's something that you pass into the function to have the function interact with it. Okay, so we have our system.out.print line. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna have it say, uh, hello from my underscore method so we know where our code is getting executed from so we know we're actually in the my the my method method it's kind of confusing to say okay and so in here we're just going to start it off by saying system out dot print line and we're just going to say uh hi from the main method and just to recap just since we're starting methods and it might start to get confusing all code is executed from main so if this uh if we commented this out 
uh, or just deleted it altogether. Might as well just delete it altogether just to make my point. If this was all our program was and we tried to run this program, you would not see hello from my method uh, in, in the uh, console because this does not get called anywhere from the main method. So the program runs, goes to the main method, there's nothing in there, and so it just quits. So it doesn't run this, this method unless you specifically call the method. Okay, so I think we got that covered. We'll add this back in here, uh, hi from the main method. Then we're going to call my method. And by doing that, it's the same as system.out.println, except without all the dots. These, uh, these have to do with actually classes, which are also an exciting topic, but getting ahead of myself, we'll talk about that later. So just type my underscore method with the parentheses and then a semicolon. And if you look at just this part of the print line, just this method, it's the same exact thing, um, except there's no parameters, so we don't have to put anything in, the, in between the parentheses. But we type our function, have our parentheses, have our uh, closing semicolon to end the statement, and then that is it. And that will be able to run our method. And just so we know we're back in the main method, after we run our method, we'll type uh, back in the main method. That might be a little confusing to you guys, like, wait, why are you saying back in the main method? Well, what happens is the computer is going to, uh, or the compiler, I should say, is going to uh, look at this code and say, all right, uh, you're, I'm going to run this. I'm going to output high from the main method. And then it's going to see this method. It's going to say, my method, huh? I wonder that what that is. And it's going to jump from the main method to my method. And it's going to go in here and it's going to start running my method and then it's going to say okay system.out.println hello for my method all right it's going to do that and then it's going to reach this uh closing curly bracket and then it's going to say okay that's all that my method has to do uh, has to show me that's all it's got so it's going to go back to where it launched my method it's going to come back here and then it's going to continue running uh main so that's kind of how it works where you can call methods within methods and you can get these massive chains of calling all these different methods from other methods and it can get kind of complicated but just know that um, it, it's going to start in main it's going to run this then it's going to run my method and run this code and then it's going to go back to uh, at, at the end of the semicolon and start running main again with this line so that's why I kind of said back in the main method because it kind of jumps to my method and then goes back to main okay enough exploiting let's just run the darn thing so you can go control f11 run the program and Perfect, okay, cool. Hi from the main method, hello uh, from my method, and then back in the main method. So it does exactly what we wanted it to do. It, uh, we made our method, it, uh, it starts in main, runs our method, and then goes back to main, exactly as expected. So I hope you kind of have an understanding of how these methods work now, and kind of a little, uh, at least a little understanding of how to define a method. I know it can be confusing when I told you to completely ignore like half the words and the definition of the method, but bear with me. In the next tutorial, we're going to go a little more in depth, and I promise you, you will have it under your belt in no time. I'll see you guys later.